Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and another video. And uh, today I wanted to show you guys real quick uh, my Cervelo R3. And I wanted to show you a, a gear modification I've made to the bike. Alright guys, here is my uh, Cervelo R3. Now, um, this is running the Altegra Di2 uh, component group. And uh, I like the group. Um, it does shift well. But I will point out that uh, I have had a couple of issues um, shifting the front derailleur um, going from the small chain ring to the big chain ring um, on a few occasions when I've been forced to shift under the load. So just something I wanted to point out. I mean, the group set does shift very well, but um, and I do and I do like it. But um, I did want to point out that I myself have had a couple of issues while trying to shift from the small chain ring up to the big chain ring um, on a couple of occasions and you know while doing that under force rather it be a group ride or a race scenario um, just something I wanted to point out now I uh, don't have the stock these are not the stock rims I've actually got a set of uh, these are Cycleops uh, branded um, rims although I did take the stickers off um, but they're actually made by Envy's and these are a set of uh, tubular uh, wheels. They're my race wheels and I'm currently running a set of uh, Continental Grand Prix uh, sprinters on here. Tubular tires, 25 centimeter tires. Now I did make that switch this year from the 23s to the 25s and um, I, I, I really like riding on the 25s. Um, it seems that they give you more more ride comfort and, um, and all the studies now are showing that they're actually a little bit more um, aero and offer a little, a little bit better um, rolling resistance so um, I'm running 25s on this bike with the uh, with the uh, cycle ops um, tubular wheels now uh, just got the standard uh, stock um, SLK stem on here um, it does have the uh, Cervelo carbon uh, um, handlebars now I do have a uh, um, this is not a stock saddle this is my uh, Sally Italia SLR saddle has the carbon rails, um, just a lighter saddle, and uh, you know I've been trying to build this bike for a for a lightweight climbing machine, and um, now it does have the of course it's got the full Otegra Di2 component group. Now I've got the rotor cranks. Um, it came with the rotor cranks, and uh, this is actually a 5236, um, what they call a mid compact. If I had my choice, I would be running 5034. But um, what I will do is I will certainly, uh, you know, ride this component group out, and uh, you know, once I'm due for an upgrade, um, I will certainly go to 5034 next time around. Of course, I've got my um, speed play uh, clipless pedals on here. All my bikes have uh, speed play pedals. Just got a couple of basic uh, carbon uh, water bottle cages. Now I am running a, uh, a Garmin cadence meter on the back here in the back chain stay. Now here's the interesting part that I wanted to show you guys. And um, as you can see, this is a huge cassette. And this is actually an 11 to 40 tooth cassette. Um, and it actually is working with the Ultegra Di2 um, rear derailleur. Now, in order to make this work, I have had to have a, a road link installed. And for anybody who's not familiar with the road link, basically it is just a, uh, um, a stainless steel bracket that basically just extends your rear derailleur hanger down a little bit lower, which allows you to accommodate a bigger gear. And on my bike, um, it would just, with just adding the road link, I was able to put on the 11 to 40 cassette and it works really, really good. Now, the main reason why I go to such a big cassette is the fact that I love when I'm riding, especially if I'm racing or if I'm in a hard effort, um, you know, through my training and through my and through the races I've been in, I just find that I perform better and I'm able to to put out higher wattage numbers for a longer duration of time when I keep my leg speed and my cadence, you know, really high. I'm talking, you know, anywhere from 100 to 120, you know, RPMs. You know, even on steep hills. You know, when I'm climbing a 10-15% grade, I'm trying to keep my leg speed at 100-115 RPMs. 
And the only way that I'm able to accommodate that being 5'6", 125 pounds, is I had to have, you know, super, you know, super large cassettes. And um, on this 11 to 40 setup, I can climb a 15% pitch hill and I can pretty much maintain 115, you know, cadence. And in doing so, I have just found again in my own testing and in my own, you know, training and, and, and racing and looking at the numbers while I'm riding, I just find that I can produce more power and produce more power for longer when I have higher cadence as opposed to just trying to grind out a bigger gear. Um, that's just what works for me. And I've been basically converting all of my bikes over to these larger cassettes um, in this easier gear ranges uh, to accommodate that. Now, uh, this is actually the currently the easiest gearing setup that I have. And like I said, I, this is my uh, 5236 um, up front semi-compact and the 11 to 40 in the back. Um, been a great bike. Now I do have uh, just an SLK um, carbon seat post here. I'm also on the bike, but uh, this is a great bike. Weighs in, uh, it was like, I think it was 16 and a half pounds, you know, with everything, um, you know, not counting the, the little seat bag here or my headlight that I've got on top. Um, but pretty much, you know, with the 11 to 40 cassette, uh, conversion and the pedals and everything and the cadence meter. I think it was right around 16 and a half pounds. So still a pretty, a very light bike. Um, and the one thing I will say about the R3 um, is, now again, I, I don't have really any experience on my new uh, giant TCR. So this is not part of the equation, but um, uh, minus the TCR, I, I can't offer an opinion there yet, but this Cervelo R3 is the best handling bike I have ever ridden personally. Um, it handles better than my than my Kestrels, uh, than my Kestrel bikes. Um, it just handles very, very good. I raced this bike um, this past September in the Green Mountain stage race. I, uh, I used it on stage one time trial and it performed very well there. I took, uh, uh, I think it was a mid-pack finish in the time trial, but it was, I was able to stay pretty close to the front on time and I raced this bike in the Stage 4 Criterium. And I tell you what, anybody who's not familiar with the Green Mountain Stage Race uh, Criterium, Stage 4 Criterium, it's a very fast, very technical Criterium. And uh, the R3 performed flawlessly through there. Um, just, it, it gives me a lot of confidence when I'm barreling into a, you know, corner at, you know, 25 miles an hour um, in, in a pack of guys. I'm uh, just very, very confident on the R3. The handling is just phenomenal. So great bike. Um, was actually able to finish with the lead pack and the Criterium. So, and I'm not by any means a strong Criterium racer. Um, those aren't really fit for, you know, such small lightweight guys like me who have a hard time keeping that inertia up. But um, very happy with my R3. Um, it's a great bike and it is a little bit dirty. I've been riding it here hard uh, this fall. But uh, just wanted to show you guys the bike real quick. If you're in the market for, you know, a great uh, just all-around bike, great race bike, you know, a great bike for anything you want to do, um, the Cervelo R3 is uh, certainly a fantastic bike. So thanks again, guys, for tuning into the channel, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.